Next, we come to uh, a story that, that, that had apparently uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the head of this project, quote, giddy with excitement. Um, but they also admitted that this might be because they've been in lockdown for too long. Uh, and that is the news that carbon... Unexpected consequences. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, giddy, giddy, giddy carbon daters. Uh, carbon dating, um, as nature.com uh, says here, the workhorse of archaeology, uh, for, for, for certainly you know, throughout my lifetime, essentially, um, is about to get a an overhaul. Now, it, it, it's interesting... This this headline grabbed my attention for a couple of reasons. First of all, because in in uh, in other places it's been reported as though our carbon dating previously has been horribly wrong, and now it's going to be corrected. And the headline essentially, you know, it implies that even if the content of the article doesn't, it's kind of like you know, carbon dating finally, finally, it's going to be correct. Um, whereas actually, this is more much more like a refinement. And and, and over the course of the, the, the lifetime of carbon dating, there have been several, several instances of what's called recalibration or, or, or calibration uh, being applied, calibration curves in particular being applied to carbon dating. Now, uh, long story short, uh, carbon dating relies on the half-life of the... Uh, um, uh, the uh, particular molecule of carbon, C, carbon fourteen isotope, sorry, of carbon, sorry, thank you, uh, carbon fourteen, um, and how its decay relates to more stable forms of carbon, as found typically uh, almost always in organic material. Uh, this this is often uh, enters the 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 the, the biomass uh, via plant life uh, and atmosphere as, atmospheric uh, sort of soak into water and other, and other other mediums into animals and eventually when those animals die the stable carbon remains at a certain level and the uh, radioactive carbon, the isotope, starts to decay, and you can sort of measure how much has gone away compared to the stable carbon, and you'll get a date for when that that creature stopped ingesting radio uh, radioactive carbon, as it were. Um, and uh, the 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 need for calibration was identified uh, as uh, as as being important when people started to understand the different ways carbon has first of all uh, levels have altered through time in the past at some points there were there was more or less uh, in different as i've just hinted at in different places perhaps carbon will be absorbed into into the the i don't know the biosphere is that the right word in, into uh, into creatures uh, at different rates uh, for example fish uh, will often have less than their i don't know amphibious um, neighbors because of uh, the fact that the water absorbs this uh, carbon 14 less readily and interestingly that actually has an effect on uh, for example religious communities if you are dating monks for example often because of the amount of fish that they eat they will display in terms of carbon dating as being different to their to their fellow medieval residents on the mainland i'm thinking about lindisfarne or something who are eating uh, beef uh, or something else anyway the point is and, 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 and as a sideline getting uh, condi joint conditions which uh, to do with obesity <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, um, but the, the 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 point is though is that the the method is is and has always been sound. So that's the first thing to say. In so much as that there are some people who are getting very excited, going, "I told you, I knew Gobleki Tepe is actually three million years old." No, 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 calm down, calm down. <laughs> um, but <laughs> what's exciting about this, and what's making some people giddy, is the uh, the 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 curves, the calibration, is going to be much more uh, refined for different parts of the world. In this instance, in Int Cal 20, as it's being called, uh, International Calibration 20, uh, 2020, is based on 12,904 data points, nearly double the size of 2013's data set. Um, the results are far more satisfying, says Paula Rima, who heads the Int Cal Working Group and leads the radiocarbon dating Chrono Center at Queen's University Belfast um, for a known brief magnetic field reversal 40,000 years ago for example the 2013 curves radiocarbon peak was too low and too old by 500 years an annoyance fixed by this new curve uh, and I think uh, I think this is wonderful because first of all um, some more remote or some less 
uh, readily accessible locations are now included in the curve. So you'll be able to get a, a curve for your local area or atmosphere or environment much more readily. But also, I think this is wonderful because this, this is scientific method in action. This is reflexive work. This is the way that science works. And uh, I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's always nice to see and be able to point out that uh, well, to quote someone, uh, a certain journalist that both Andy and I, I think, hold in high, high regard, when the facts change, I uh, my uh, I change my mind. Now, of course, he's quoting someone else in that instance, but it's it's true, and I like that. I like the fact that it, this this is the opposite of dogma, I suppose, is what I'm saying, uh, and and uh, and it's great to see see it happening. Um, did, did, are, are you giddy about it? Um, obviously, it, it, it's not something I work with on day to day, but you know working largely on uh, the archaeology of conflict i'm dealing with things that are less than 200 years old and there are often documents saying exactly when in may 1940 something was planned by the war office oh okay um <laughs> but when when you when when you deal with uh, you know when, when you're dealing with prehistory remote antiquity uh, and so on, obviously yeah, date, date, accurate dating has been the holy grail of archaeology since archaeology started mm. you know it, from the from the from the moment that people realized yeah. in the 18th and 19th century that the world wasn't created in 4004 bc in october mm -hmm. um and everything dated from then uh people have been trying to find ways of dating they've tried you know they've tried dating uh, it's always been relative methods of dating so it, it's you know in the roman period what was the what were the regnal dates of an emperor and yeah. you get a coin and then you are and then, but then you say okay if uh, you know that particular emperor died in that particular year, but how long was the coin in circulation after his death? Was it in somebody? It, okay, it was worn, so it's probably maybe 20, 30 years after his death. But on the other hand, um, a coin that maybe was in somebody's money box or in a hoard might be pristine, but might have been you know buried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you you can get, play all sorts of games. Yeah. Pottery is the famous one. Yeah. Pottery type series. Mm. Um, and I remember the excitement on a previous recalibration. Um, in uh, when in in London and uh, the southeast, people realised that um, there was a there were errors in dating sites in the Bronze Age, because uh, they uh, carbon dates were, could be cross checked that, uh, um, against a site which turned up uh, a, a, a waterlogged site with, with a good organic survival which turned up with a good tree ring um, uh, sample. And that uh, again, I'm old enough to remember the excitement in the the real excitement, the giddy excitement in the oh. early to mid 1970s. Um, yeah, TV specials and chronicle about this with Professor Colin Ren uh, Colin Renfrew as he then was Lord Lord Renfrew as he now is, um, talking about the calibration of carbon 14 dating, which had been around since the early 1950s, but calibrating carbon 14 against tree rings and particularly the bristlecomb pine which gave you a roughly 4000 year sequence of tree rings which could be tested uh which could be used to test mm. carbon 14 and they found errors of thousands of years in some cases mm. extreme cases mm. um i think the other thing we have to bear in mind now is that the way the technique's been refined since um some very uh, you know, very good science um some excellent work in the carbon 14 labs and some very clever computer-based number crunching to do with things like probability mm -hmm. um i've given much much we we for the last 10 years or or so we've been used to working with much much tighter ranges than used to be the case mm. so getting down to ranges of 20 years plus or minus rather than 100 years plus or minus mm. yeah yeah. Uh, in some cases, which, which so is, which is yeah. in, which is interesting because when you when you hear uh, yeah, so even even you know even in, since my exposure to this stuff, I mean, I remember being, people getting very excited when I was uh, first studying archaeology about about how sample sizes were decreasing. Yeah, you know, the the need yes. to have a, a much smaller sample now uh, was revolutionary. Yes. Um, you could just sort Absolutely. of flex of charcoal for suddenly became useful, um, but also uh, how. Uh, increasingly archaeologists are frustrated when as you say they can't get below plus 20 or plus minus 20 or but uh, i think i once saw someone complaining about it possibly uh, was it uh, i might be wrong but was it plus minus five i remember someone going oh you know, it's a prehistoric date why are you complaining about five years <laughs> like you know like, <laughs> but, it, but they the, weren't ticking off the calendar yeah indeed they weren't giddy. not in quite that way <laughs> no. yeah 
but no, it's 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 yeah. good. It's good, and and presumably this 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 isn't. Uh, yeah, this isn't it. This you know, this will happen again in in a few years' time, um, and 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 that's that's again. I think that's beautiful. I think that's really it. Really speaks for the 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 the, the value of the scientific method. In some ways, it's not simply you know, it's it's not a monolith. I'm, I'm, you know. I'm, no, absolutely. I mean, what what I love about this story, and, and uh, like you, it, it's um, I should be controversial here. Archaeology isn't a science. Oh but dear. Si but but science is integral to archaeology, <laughs> and yeah. this is this is some really good science and great to see. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so.